champions against the Cincinnati Bengals. We are live at Riverfront Stadium where the temperature in Cincinnati is 86 degrees. Humidity 72%. The wind southwest at 5 miles an hour. Hazy, hot, and humid is the forecast. In fact, down on the field, it is 110 degrees. So we're going to find out who is in shape today. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. You know, every year around the NFL, there seems to be a catchphrase that catches on. Winning ugly seems to be that phrase this year. They say it applies to the Rams. They say now it applies to the Bears, although they are 3-0, unbeaten. Today, they have their injured quarterback, Jim McMahon, back. He'd been out, as you know, with a first-degree shoulder separation. We talked with him last night. He said he'll play the rest of the year in pain, but he's learned to live with it. With me, of course, is John Madden, as usual, and John having McMahon back may solve some of that winning ugly syndrome. I think it's going to eventually solve a big part of it because, as Mike Dicker was saying last night, he said, when we were starting Mike Tomczak, we had a young quarterback, and we couldn't do a lot of things. He said, now with McMahon, back, he said, we want to get to a wide-open offense. We want to get the ball more to Willie Gall. We want to get the ball more to our tight end, the type of things that Jim McMahon could do. Well, how about the defense? You know, Sam Weiss, the Cincinnati Bengal coach, has an interesting philosophy. He says he thinks he knows how to beat that defense. And it has nothing to do with Buddy Ryan. It has nothing to do with the 46. It has nothing to do with how they move around. He doesn't really feel that they're in great shape. And he thinks what you do is you come out in the first half and you run it. And you make them go on sweep right, sweep left, quick huddle, no huddle, go deep, run them. And then in the second half, he thinks they're going to wear down, get tired. He think that's when they're going to get to them. Well, we're going to see the Bears on offense first. Jim Breach is lined up to kick off for Cincinnati. Back deep, Neil Anderson, number 35, and Thomas Sanders, number 20, on the right side of your picture. And Breach is set to go. A wild, enthusiastic crowd, a bad kick. Anderson picks it up at about the eight-yard line. The Bears have a draft choice, and the Bengals are down in a hurry. Down Anderson at about the 16. There is the quarterback, Jim McMahon. And here is the defense that he will face. Up front, Edwards, Krumry, and Ross Browner, the down three. The linebackers, King, Xander, Parker, and Reggie Williams, the veteran. In the secondary, the veteran, Lewis Breeden, and the rookie, Lewis Phillips. Fulcher and Kemp are the safety men. The Bears take over at their own 16. That's a great way to work the speed guy. You don't always have to go straight up the field. You can also go across the field with speed. First and 10 for the Super Bowl champions at their own 37. him right in front of the 30-yard line. Second and five. 
Let's look at that their offense. McMahon, the quarterback, Peyton and Suey, the runners, Galt and Ortigo, the wide receivers. The veteran offensive line, Colbert, Bortz, Hilgenberg, Thayer, Keith Van Horn, and the tight end is Emory Moorhead. When you're playing a fired up team at home, the way the Bears are, they're playing the Bengals, the stadium is fired up, the team is fired up, you don't run right at that defense early because they're fired up to stop the run. You go back and you pass, you throw to Willie Gall, and I'll tell you, there's nothing that calms down a defense like completed passes. And McMahon hit his first two to Gall for better than 60 yards. Mike Ditka. flag down. See, that's a tough thing to do. A handoff from the spread formation. I think it is against Cincinnati. They jumped offside, so the Bears dodge a bullet here. Was well, Eddie Edwards the culprit? Offside. Number 27 defense. number 27 see what he does he was a safety and he just jumped up outside there and got in that neutral zone you don't see that much a defensive back offside not very often one of the officials forgot his hanger you can't do that you can't leave one out there they'll nope. think it's the next play keep calling them all day take away your most important weapon <laughs> first down for the bears at the bingo 19 no score yet patterns to Willie Gauld on him, but down here you just can't beat them all day. You're not going to beat them like a drum. And if you keep going to that well too many times, he's going to come up with one. Especially down here where he doesn't have to worry about that deep speed that golf possesses so much. Well, that wouldn't be a bad place. If they're going to use the speed down here, they have to use it on a crossing pattern and use all 50 yards of width. Golf and Ortigo both are split wide right. Collinsworth, a 
the Bears had it first and ten deep in Bengal territory. I think that was Reggie Phillips. One of the things the Bengals were going to do or think they could do was work on Reggie Phillips. And I'll tell you, that's a tough pattern, that quick out down here. You see, they just take the boom. Free stretch box, boom, hits that ball out there to Collinsworth. Phillips sees it, gets a good jump on it. He got there about the same time as the ball did, knocked it up in the air, and Gary Fenton was right there to get it. Good play by Reggie Phillips. Holman and Brooks finally got Fensick down, but it's first and goal Bears at the Bengal three. And the refrigerator is in the backfield. With that means they're probably going to run right, right behind the refrigerator. Dicker was talking about this formation and he said, you know, he said, we try and do other things, but the best thing is put refrigerator on one side, let him lead, give the ball to Walter right behind him. But sometimes you try and outsmart yourself. He wanted to get it in on that first time. He didn't have to call a second one to that close. Well, the bridge is still in there. Yeah, but he's on the left side, so that means they'll run to the left side. about a guy who comes, he has a shoulder injury, got new pads on, not doing this or that, but he'll still carry a quarterback sneak down in the goal line, just drive it right in there. Did good. You know, they say they don't talk, they don't get along, but he sure has confidence to call that play. Butler will try the extra point with Steve Fuller holding. Butler had the hot night against Green Bay last week. Stadium in Cincinnati. Pat Summerall, John Madden. That's the story of the, the scoring drive. Two plays, two yards. Vincic got the rebound interception. McMahon sneaked it in. And I think the big play was cornerback Reggie Phillips, who called that, who caused that ball to bounce up in the air to Fencic. Tim McGee is back. And will field the kick off about two yards deep in his own end zone. Got some room, too. Special team charge with a little bit of a afterthought contact. 28-yard return, but I'm sure it's going to be a penalty against Cincinnati. Over on the sideline, that's the Bengal offensive unit. And they're getting ready. When things are settled down, they'll come in with no huddle. I think they're having their huddle right now on the sidelines. I think they're going to wait to see where the ball is to call the play. Now they won't go into a huddle. They'll just line Holding right up on the ball. Number 30 of the receiving team. First down. 30 is Bill Johnson. Backup fullback. So it'll be first down Cincinnati. Again, as we said, no huddle. Collinsworth split wide to the left. Eddie Brown to the right. a little too early. Encroachment, 99 defense, first down. And encroach. I think uh, Boomer Esiason had something to do with that way he was calling cadence. You know, sometimes you're a little antsy, and a guy gives you that, you know, set, go, go, and that tends to jump you. First and five. The Bears in the Bear defense. Reggie Phillips on the stop. Should instant replay be used in the NFL? Well, if you have an opinion and would care to call, those are the numbers. 
Yes in current form. Yes in revised form. No. And the Bengals again uh, make it difficult for us to get that information to you where you can have a chance to write it down because again they go with no help. They're lined up. Now he's calling the play. by one second James Brooks hit by Singletary and by Wilbur Marshall and by Steve McMichael you know one of the reasons it looks like they're disorganized is they when they first line up they don't have a play yet see as they're up there now they don't have a play so they all have to stand around there Boomer and Sciencen has to call the formation and he has to call the play then he has to call the blocking and he has to tell what number it's on had to come in and now he backs over where he wants to be split. He had to come in so he could hear everything. Down to five seconds, down to four. Just to get it off again, it's Brooks. Brooks up the middle, picks up perhaps four. Richard Dent on the stop. There's Sam White. The Bingo coach signaling the plays in to Boomer Esiason. New Orleans leads the Giants seven out of first. I think what he was signaling in there first is four wide receivers. So that's the first thing Boomer has to know. Hey, you got four wide receivers coming in. And then he gives them, so he knows the formation, then he gives them the play. That time they went with the split huddle. That is the front five come up first, and the other five stay back with the quarterback. Third down, and seven from the 37. And again, the Bears get the rebound. You know, one of the things that Sam Weiss was saying is that we have to give Boomer a science and time. Not just time so he doesn't get sacked, but time to follow through. That time, Richard Dent was right in his face. And you watch him. Watch him. He's going to go back here left. Now watch Dent coming from the left of the screen. Pushing on Munoz. See, right up there, he got that hand up. And it didn't look like his receiver was even turned around. I think Collinsworth had a I mean, I think Esiason had to throw that one before Collinsworth was ready. Room to follow through. That's so important. Watch what Dent does. See, he gives him that push, and Esiason can't follow through. That, and I think he threw it before he wanted to. At least he threw it before Collinsworth was ready. And the Bears take over at the Bingo 37, first and 10. A chance to add to their 7-0 lead already. Upon review by the replay official, the play will stand. Upon review by the replay official, the play will stand. I think a lot of people thought that ball hit the ground. Well, as you look at it, the first thing it does, it's going to hit Collinsworth right between the 8 and the 0. That's a bad news because it happens to be his bat. When it didn't hit the ground, you see the ball up in the air. Marshall catches it. Then it went down. Now, whether or not he had control of that or the ball hit the ground, I don't know. Here's McMahon. Back to throw. Intended for a right man and picked off by the Bengals' Leo Parker. And they turn it right back around. first quarter with the Bears leading the Bengals seven to nothing. The Bengals have the ball after an interception, so they take over. This is a guy in left-handed Boomer Esiason that everybody says is going to be a great one. What about that one? Again, he has an awful lot to think about. Signals, the calling the plays, the snap count, the blocking assignments, everything. Collinsworth is wide right this time. Brown to the left. Coleman was the man in the open. Science has it picked off. 
off by Otis Wilson. Wilson down the far sideline. Five turnovers already in this game. If both of these guys are having a problem, that's the fourth interception. He's had five turnovers. There's been one fumble. Here he's just rolling to the left. He gets a little pressure right there. Then he comes off, and he has plenty of time. He throws it behind and over Eddie Brown's head. Otis Wilson was in his zone. He was just playing that short outside, and whap, right between the two fives there for Otis. Marshall has an interception. Now Wilson an interception. And Fensick has an interception for the Bears. Five turnovers. Cincinnati three, Chicago two. Seven nothing, the Bears lead. First and ten. The bingo 18. Suey at the line of scrimmage. Carl Sander was the first man to hit him after a gain of one. You know, we talked earlier about how it's 110 degrees down on that field. And I know the Cincinnati Bengals wanted to wear out the Bear defense. With all these turnovers, that's the thing that's helping both of these defenses. They haven't been out there that long. Second and eight at the 16. Suey and Peyton behind McMahon. Probably have to throw. Reitman is the tight end. He gives to Peyton instead. Peyton hammers down almost to the 10-yard line. Sander again was the first defender to hit him. Walter second in the NFL. The Bears second in the NFL in rushing. You know, it's funny how there's always the argument over, you know, who's the best back in the league, who's the best ever. I've always said when you take running back and you're talking about passing, blocking, catching, ever, it has to be this guy, Walter Payton, the best who's ever played the game. Ditka said last night when he first took over the Bears, Peyton was the best kickoff man they had. More to go in motion. It'll be Peyton again. He skips to the inside. Skips for enough for a first down. Emmanuel King tripped him up. It's going to be close. Bear player down. It's Keith Van, Van Horn. Horn. It was see the motion. Ortigo brings the motion out here. Tom Thayer, the right guard, pulls. He's going to lead along with Suey, but they both get behind Peyton. You know, anytime you have a lead guy, and Matt Suey is one of the good ones, he has to be in front of the ball carrier. But he got delayed too much, and Peyton had to leave him. First down, Bears inside the Bengal 10. Looks like it's about first and goal at the eight. I think this is an area that you put the refrigerator in. That's a little too far out for fridge. First and goal at the seven, let's say. Seven and a half. You know, the fridge looks like that jersey's tightening up on them a little more this year than it did last year. It looks like the helmet's getting a little tighter. That seven is separated a little from the two. <laughs> That's Peyton in motion. First and goal. To just outside the three, Xander and Barker for the Bengals. Yeah, the Bears are doing something new, Pat, on goal line that I've never seen them do before. They're, uh, the last time they scored a touchdown, they had Steve McMichael, their defensive tackle, in as a tight end. They're not going to put him in yet, but I expect if they don't make it here, they'll put him in on the next play. Second and goal at the four. They put Suey in motion to the right to block out there and then come to the inside. Then they put Peyton as a second back out there. He got it a little behind and he couldn't make a move up the field. Now we see the fridge and McMichael. The Bears in the short yardage are getting a real defensive package in there. They better be in shape. Two, two defensive 
tackle. Play it off them. Harry in the backfield. And now McMahon doesn't like what he sees and takes the Bears first time out. We have 315 left in a very eventful first quarter. With the Bears leading Cincinnati seven to nothing. It is hot everywhere. The Bengals, their mascot, two-yard line. There's the Bengal defense now huddling over on the sideline. That was a moment ago. Third and goal at the two. Harry is out. Suey's back in. near third and two and I bet Jim McMahon thought that looked like a long two and wanted to change the play so he went over to the sideline got the refrigerator out there and he got Suey back in so he could fake here to Suey you see on the fake trap then come out and throw to Peyton out here on a one-man screen you see the blocker out in front of him there and then all Walter Peyton had to do was walk in the end zone that was Jim Covert who got out there in front of Peyton to try the extra point with Steve Fuller holding Bears leading 13 nothing and Butler is good again three oh eight left to play in the first quarter and the Bears out in front by 14 and River Bears leading Cincinnati 14 nothing three oh eight left to play first quarter the scoring drive, six plays, 17 yards. McMahon has finished it off with a two-yard pass to Peyton to make it 14 nothing. And the Bears have been able to take advantage of turnovers already. There's that story. Butler set to kick it off. Tim McGee back deep. Let's watch that touchdown again. This is a good one because you got a lot of coaching. You get the fullback, fake the him in a trap, get the motion man coming in here and blocking inside. Then you get your tackle out here leading for Peyton, who gets the ball out here. Now that's a lot of diagram, but boom, you fake, you come, you go, you throw. See, watch this. He comes in here. There goes the motion guy. Whap, he whaps in there, fake the suey, throw out to Peyton, cover it out in front, all for two yards. That's what he likes to do as a coach. <laughs> two yards, but it's a touchdown, two yards. That's the end of the story that's most important. And Brown is put wide left. Tom's worth right. Tyson gives to his big pullback. Kennebrew. Larry Kennebrew is 270 pounds. William Perry on the stop. Pat Summerall and John Madden. We're at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, the home of the Bengals. And it's the first time ever in regular season the Bears have ever been here. Two teams have only played twice in their history. And the Bengals won them both. Walter Payton over on the sideline. The great Walter. So you know when you see him, you always think that he's kind of a quiet guy. But he's probably the biggest practical joker in the Bears team. That looks like to me, Pat, a cramp. You know, when you, when you have, you know, we talked about how hot it is down there, 110 degrees, and what happens, you tend to dehydrate. And when you lose those fluids, then I think we're going to see a lot of that type of thing coming out, where guys are coming out with cramps. It usually affects a guy like a Kennebrew, you know, he's a, a, big heavily, guy like yeah, a heavily muscled guy. Big guys don't like humidity. They don't stay big very long. Oh. Bill Johnson has replaced Kennebrew. Brooks is back there with it. And Brooks gets the pitch back. He is almost decapitated by Otis Wilson. A loss of one. Otis Wilson is the guy who will decapitate if you try and run to his side. See, now that's the old Bear defense. You see, Marshall... Over Marshall's up on the tight end. Otis Wilson is on the outside and coming. Now, no one blocks him, 
And if you run a sweep at Otis Wilson and don't block him, you're going to have to check your running back. Might have another one on the sideline. Third and eight. Bingo's at their own 29. Refrigerator in the middle of the time. Sison gets it down the middle of Brooks, and he had him. And Brooks is being covered, covered by Wilbur Marshall and just beginning to pull away. How'd you like to be the left guard on that play? Bruce Kazurski, watch him. He's number 64. He's blocking the bridge, 72. Watch him. He comes this way. Now you start to push. That's a load pushing you. But when he gets there and you get one foot out and one foot back, you just go right on your back. Bruce is saying, wow, man, you told me he was fake. You didn't tell me he was that strong or that short. Lou Barnes back deep for the Bears. Jim Hayes to punt for the Bingo. Didn't get it all. 37, Barnes fields it. And is cut down at about the 47 by Bill Johnson. 35-yard punt by Hayes, the 11-yard return. The Bears will take over again in pretty good shape. There's Vic Brew on the cart. I would say if he goes to the cart, then it's more than a cramp. And you see the, you see the ice pack on it, so it looks like it's an ankle. tell you that'll hurt because he's he's a big important part of their offense that big pullback that you pound on the inside so that you can get your fast half back brooks to the outside that's what they did to cleveland last week in the second half particularly Peyton is the lone setback there's first and ten their own 47 golf the man in motion followed by Breeden. going for golf got him and golf is gone McMahon is down, but the Bears have the touchdown, a 53-yarder from McMahon to golf. I'll tell you, anyone that says that the Bears don't miss Jim McMahon or don't need Jim McMahon or that Jim McMahon isn't important has no idea what they're talking about. That is not winning ugly. Well, and, you know, of course, it's hard to win pretty when you don't have your guy. But here's the guy who can make things happen. I don't care. I mean, the guy, he is a little different. But I'll tell you, if he's not the best quarterback in the NFL, he sure is close to it. Wearing those special pads. Kevin Butler to try for the extra point. The Bengals can't get untracked at all. Butler with Fuller holding will try to make it 21 to nothing. It down. Butler's good. Here comes McMahon out on the field. Now, to congratulate Butler, his best friend is Kevin Butler. Watch, he'll grab him before it's over. See, he does a little shaking, a little slapping. Now watch, he's looking for Butler. There you go there, that was it. He was gloating last night because he said, uh, I killed Butler in cards last night on the plane coming down here. Maybe I shouldn't say that. He said he'll, he'll kick well. <laughs> I tell you, this is the thing that you need in today's football. You need speed. Speed just kills any defense. Bully ball started on the right, came all the way across, and now he just runs straight down the field. I'll tell you what, that's a great throw from McMahon. He led him away from the defender, closer to the sideline. That would have made you proud. It was a perfect throw. And that one wasn't against Lewis Breeden. The first two golf fought were against Breeden. That one was against the rookie, Lewis Phillips. Now, you know, sometimes in the, you, know, you watch a guy on film, and everyone says he's fast, but until he runs up against you and you're paired off with him, you don't realize how fast. You can't believe how fast he gets there. And then it's too late. 21 nothing, and we're in the first quarter. 48 seconds left. over on the sideline has to be in uh, a little shell shock frame of mind right now. 21 nothing. Tim McGee and Stanford Jennings back deep. And Butler will kick it off. He's not playing like he's hurt. Keep it in there. McGee stayed there. Let's watch 
watch and see how Gall, who starts here, now he's going to come in motion, and this is how he gets on Phillips. He gets over here and then straight up the field. McMahon throws it right over his outside shoulder. You see, he's in the slot. He starts there in motion. Now Phillips is going over with him, running across with him. Then he just goes straight up. He leaves enough room outside. McMahon throws the ball perfectly. Phillips made a mistake by looking inside. You never look inside. You always look towards the receiver in man coverage. When you take that look, it pulls you away from the target. And it widens the target. This is tight end Rodney Holman. A gain of 13 and a bingo first down. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. Rodney Holman is the leading receiver on the Bengals team, and he's the guy that, you know, they try and get to on those possession-type passes, but they also go deep to him because he runs a 4-6, and that's wide receiver speed. And he's 238. Here's a little split huddle. I always hated this as a lineman. You know, like, you get up here, what do you do? You, know, you just got to watch those guys. I always like to get up and go play. the playoff. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Chicago Bears 21. The Cincinnati Bengals devastated. Nothing. John, that first quarter took 41 minutes to play. Yeah, and I always say that, that the reason that causes long quarters, long halves, and long games are the number of passes. In that first quarter, there were 14 passes you know, by both teams, and then we had five turnovers, so you, you're stopping the clock all the time. First and 10, Cincinnati at their own 32. And off to Brooks. And there's no room for James Brooks. Hampton on the bottom of the pile. Did you hear that in the, uh, over there in the, in the pile? You could hear the guy say, not over here, not over here. That had to be Otis Wilson. So he's saying, not over here. That's what they do. You know, the guys run there, then they tell them when they don't make anything, not over here, not over here. See, that's part of the game, too. There's that play selection that John was talking about a minute ago. Second and eight. Collinsworth. Collinsworth with one hand moves into their territory after catching the ball. That's the same type of thing that Willie Gall's got. Now they're working on Reggie Phillips as they said they were going to. They start Collinsworth, Collinsworth in motion. Now there was a little pick there. He runs all the way across the field, hits it with his left hand, finally gets it under control. That was the same pattern that Willie Galt beat him on. There it is. This, that's what Esiason sees. That was a pretty good catch. Two of the cover men, two of the bear linebackers, I think, collided with each other. Here comes Kennebrew back out of the x-ray room and back to the sideline. That's the good news. The bad news is he's on a golf cart. Still, Brooks in motion. Esiason back to throw. Incomplete. Intended for Brooks, who fell down. One thing about Esaias, and he throws the ball hard. I mean, those things are coming out of there like they're shot out of a gun. One, the good thing about it is it doesn't stay in the air very long. The bad thing about it is it tends to bounce off you. Esaias is three out of eight. 46 yards and three interceptions. Michael's got a little evidence of playing on the front of the jersey. Yeah, it's just the start of the second quarter. A little blood. Second down. There's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. And there's another one down at about the bear 30. Collinsworth was the intended receiver. He pulled up. And Boomer threw it way over his head. you say it's a double penalty because there's also one at the line of scrimmage I think the one at the line of scrimmage is going to be against the Bengals I would expect the one deep that well, looks like they're both against the Bengals Tom Dooley off 
offenses, pass interference, number 80, illegal use of hands, number 50. Second down. They got the full package. Well, they did. They got Dave Remington, the center, for holding in the in the line. Then they got Collinsworth. Watch him here, number 80, for pushing off. You see that right hand? Got in on Reggie Phillips. The right hand got him and just pushed him off. So they caught that one. Then in the line, they caught Dave Remington illegally using his hand. And there it is right there. Dan Hampton was playing nose tackle, Remington the center, and you saw that left hand up in the face mask. So that brings up second and 20. Chased by Hampton, gets away from him, fires deep. In it for Martin. Yes, he has it. Mike Richardson was back there with Martin, but it's Tyson did a good job to get the ball to Martin. A game of 51. And there's no penalty usually on that type of thing. You see a penalty because the quarterback runs around so long. Watch it. This is good by the receivers. Once you see your quarterback. You start to move. Half of them move back to him. One, Martin, went deep, and he catches the ball. He gets him turned around, and he got the big play. A gain of 51. I'll tell you, this is what takes more out of a defensive lineman than anything. Watch Dan Hampton, 99. Those guys are big. They don't run that much. He had to chase them all the way across the field and then dive at them. the Cincinnati touchdown. Six plays, the Bengals went 80 yards, kept the ball two minutes, 55 seconds. And then Siathan hit Brooks for the touchdown. Reach. Neil Anderson fumbles it out of bounds, and it'll start from there. Let's watch that touchdown play, and you'll see how Brooks gets so open. Here he is right here. But Rodney Holman comes in motion, and he picks the defense here, then blocks another guy, and Brooks just runs right out here. Now, really, picks are illegal. The officials didn't see this. Watch home. The guy in motion. He got kicked, and Brooks got in the end zone. That's one way to do it. That's always been a big play for the Bengals. And the Bears take over at their own three-yard line after Neil Anderson fumbled the kickoff out of bounds. It is dropped. To just 96 down on the field now. 96 will still grab you. Yep. With the humidity, Alvin Thomas is in the game with Peyton. Now the Bears say we can't hear. And I can understand that. Hey, that was a big break there for the Bengals. A good kicker. You know, Breach kicks those knuckleballers that are tough to handle something unusual on their kickoff coverage too well he kicks it from the left hash mark then he kicks it to that side in that corner and it really takes off and bounces around on this artificial turf and you have a rookie like neil anderson trying to handle it and it just didn't work 
half. The Bengal defense can come up with a big play down here or just hold them. They're going to get the ball again in good field position. Now the Bengal player is asking the crowd to be quiet. The Bears still taking their time and still in the huddle. McMahon brings them out. Now they start it up again. Once the fans know they can do that, they're going to do it all day. Now the referee, Tom Dooley, signaling and asking for quiet. McMahon gives to Peyton. A Calvin Thomas this time. Calvin gets out for about four. And now they say he fell forward for about seven. Well, that's a big play. You know, your first goal when you're inside the five is you want to get the ball outside the five-yard line because that gives your punter, in case you have to punt, that gives him the full 15 yards back. That'll bring up a second and three. Ball just inside the Bears' 10. Bears leading 21-7. Thomas and Payton. again uh, just a little bit short of the first down David Fulcher a big strong safety Tim Drumry the nose tackle for the Bengals limps off Mike Hammerstein takes his place a rookie from Michigan hey, this, this Bengal defense does a good job against the run you know they plug it up the linebackers fill the holes the end pinching down Brauner Browner on that side running back. Mike Ditka said last night that he wanted to get Calvin Thomas in the game more, but coming off the goal line is tough. I'll tell you, he got a good block right there from Keith Van Horn. Van Horn really fired out on his guy, Eddie Edwards, took him to the ground. That gave him a little soft spot in there to pick up the first down. You know, he's a guy you don't hear much about, number 78 there, Van Horn. But tell you, he's a pretty good player. and 10 Bears, their own 15, McMahon takes to Payton, fires the ball out of bounds, he was chased by Eddie Edwards and Emmanuel King. And McMahon took a, a dumping on that play, watch Eddie Edwards there, he's working against Van Horn, Van Horn has him pretty good, he gets him to the outside, McMahon had a scramble to that side. And Edwards comes off the block and put McMahon to the turf. Now, the thing that McMahon's worried about is not getting hit on that right shoulder, but getting hit and falling on his arm. Falling like this. Uh, see, he checked it out. That's the first thing you do when you have one of those things is see if you can still get it up and around. You check it out. Second and ten. Big play here. 
He's working there again against Mark Fort. You see, he takes that outside shoulder on him. Then he clubs him with his left hand. And there McMahon was right there trying to step up. You can't allow penetration up the middle. Of course, if you're Scow, you want to get penetration up the middle. Mike Martin, back deep for Cincinnati. There was some doubt about whether he'd be able to play. He pulled a hamstring in practice on Thursday. Couldn't be too bad. High kick by Maury Buford. And the 44. Into Bear territory. To about their 45. Dan Raines made the stop. 46 yard kick by Buford. A return of 10. 941 left to play in the first half. Bears up 21 7. Bears lead the Bengals 21 7. 941 left to play in the first half. The Bengals have had their sideline huddle. And now come onto the field. Looks like they'll huddle again. Hey, you wonder what they talked about in the first huddle. I think I know. I think they talked about a whole series of plays. They were going to do this on first down. If complete, we do this. If not, we do this and all this. Brooks and Johnson are the two running backs. Brooks is flanked out wide to the left. Size and back to throw. Here comes the blitz. Otis Wilson was shot out of a cannon somewhere. I'll tell you, there's no better blitzing linebacker in football right now than Otis Wilson. I felt that at the end of last year. I think. I think he's a good linebacker when he's doing all things, but when he blitzes, when he comes, now watch him, he's going to come from the left of the uh, side of the screen, then he's going to come right up here in this hole. You see the hole? He sees the opening, he sees the Siason, and for a big guy like he is, he has more quick speed, you know, where you can be going full speed on that second step. A loss of 10, Wilson weighs 232, second and 20. update let's take you back to Brent Musburger in New York well Pat we've got a couple of big upsets brewing watch this beautiful play in the Eagle game Byers the rookie's a left-handed passer he sucks up the corner they've got quick open for the touchdown and it is 17 nothing Eagles over the Ram now let's go back to Pat Summerall and John Madden well, that is a shocker. I'll tell you, you know, you get a rookie like Byers in the leg, you don't even know he's left-handed. <laughs> Everyone in the NFL will know it from now on. Left-handed run pass. All I knew was he had a bad foot and he's big. They make a reverse. Size and gets away from Dent. And Dent is limping rather badly as he tried to give chase. We had heard that he had a pulled groin, and it really showed then. I'm sure Den will go out of the game now because he started from the outside. Watch, he's the end guy up there in the top and the right. They don't even block him. It's kind of a naked bootleg type thing. Asiason made a great move on Dent. Dent started to limp. Now Asiason makes another good move and then turns up. Comes very close to the first down. Although they're going to have to punt. Mike Hartenstein would be the veteran that backs up Dent if he can't come back. Jeff Hayes, his second punt of the day. Lou Barnes back deep for the Bears. 73 is Hartenstein. Good kick by Hayes. And the Bengals down it at about the one foot line, it would appear. Barney Bussey is back there. It's at about the one yard line. A punt of 41 yards by Hayes, and now they say he might have stepped on the end line. They bring it to the 20. that I believe are going to make an announcement about that last call. Tom Dooley, the referee, the umpire, is the official who carries the communication de device up to the replay officials in the press box. Okay, I don't know what they're saying here. Is it that Bussy's foot hits the line, but it looks like to me when the ball touches, his foot hasn't hit yet. Now, if you let it go, his right foot hits in front of the pylon. The ball never gets into the end zone. I would think that the ball should be spotted down there. 
and they're looking at some other replay or something because he's not in the end zone. The ball, you see, even if he touched there, the ball's not there yet. Now when the ball does touch, his foot isn't down. When his foot comes down, it's already outside. So I would think the ball never went across and the guy's foot wasn't there. Well, the conversation is still going on, and Tom Dooley, I believe, will make an announcement now. Further review by the replay official, the play will stand. I don't know what he saw. He must have said that Bussy's foot hit there. Definitely didn't go in the end zone. And I didn't see the foot go either. That had to be what it is. First and ten bears from the 20. Peyton hit in the backfield, breaks a couple of tackles. Got perhaps just barely back to the line of scrimmage. Should that instant replay be used in the NFL? That's the question. And if you have an opinion and would like to voice it, if you vote yes, the top number. If you vote yes in revised form, the middle number. If you vote outright no, the bottom number. It is, by the way, as you saw at the bottom of the picture, 50 cents per call. Second and nine. Peyton got a yard. Just over eight minutes left in the first half. defender. You know, McMahon started off strongly, and then lately he looks like he's rushing things. He looks like he's a little rusty with his timing. Remember that last series? He, he short-hopped one in there. He, he looked like that one was thrown uh, uh, not on timing. And maybe his arm isn't bad. I'm sure that's bothering him a little, but maybe just a lack of practice. Not working with the guys maybe bothering him. He could be and should be. They couldn't even go out in Chicago for practice on Friday. It was raining pretty much all week. The man out of the shotgun. They need nine. And again, McMahon is well short as he tried to hit Keith Ortigo. What happened here is I think here, see Williams lines up. He comes out here. Now, they start to block out, and they let this guy go right up the middle. And that's the thing that really gets him. Emmanuel King is the second linebacker in, number 90. Williams is the outside guy. You see, Covert has to block two. He turns out to block Williams, and no one gets Emmanuel King. So far, Buford, number eight, will punt again for the Bears. Mike Martin, back deep for the Bengals. They should get it again in pretty good shape. of course won last year's Super Bowl and with a reward or a prize like that goes a lot of rewards and the Bears have certainly reaped the benefits of that Fensick on the cover of Gentleman's Quarterly William Perry and Willie Gall has taken up ballet as you said different you know how that started during the week Mike Dick had told him they played like a bunch of high school kids and McMahon said he tried to dress like one Brooks the ball carrier knocked out of bounds by Reggie Phillips Larry Kennebrew over on the Bengal sideline has been taken in has been x-rayed that would look to me like he is through for the day at least for this half until they reevaluate at halftime. And that's one of the things that's hurting this Bengal running game. I don't think they're averaging a yard a carry. And if you can't get the big brew up the middle, then you sure can't get the fast Brooks to the outside. Second and eight for the Bengals. Size and back to throw. Flag is down. Pass complete to Collinsworth, who shakes one tackler. And wisely gets out of bounds as he was chased by Mike Singletary and Dave Dorson and Reggie Phillips. But a flag is down. Against Cincinnati. I know what 
that happened. Eddie Brown was up on the line of scrimmage. The tight end Rodney Holman told him get back. I can hear you say Illegal get motion. Back, Eddie. 36 offense. Second down. Stanford Jennings is number 36. Kenny Anderson, who had so many great years here with the Bengals, alongside Sam White. Only second and 13 penalty situation. 7 the Bears lead with seven and a half minutes left to play first half. Hartenstein has replaced Dent. Intended again for Collinsworth, covered by Phillips, incomplete. That's one thing that they definitely are going to do. Sam White said it yesterday. He says, we're going to work on Reggie Phillips. That's what they've been doing. Of course, had they not had the penalty, it would have worked on the play before that. There's Dan Hampton going to the inside, getting double teamed. Did you see the right tackle, Brian Blados, coming down on his knee? That's what those defensive linemen hate. They hate any time a guy comes down and cuts him. Third and 13. would be if he didn't have all those nagging injuries and seemed to play him all the time. He's plenty good like he is. Asylum. Incomplete. And no flag is down. McGee, the intended receiver, got tangled up with the defender. It was Reggie Phillips. Hey, I think he did trip him. Now watch, watch the feet. I think they get tangled up. I don't think that's a penalty, though. I don't think you penalize someone for tripping. That was that was pretty good coverage. They were going to work that side. They worked it with Collinsworth, and then they put in Tim McGee, a rookie speedster, to work some speed there. Jeff Hayes back to kick to Lou Barnes for the Bears. Barnes from his 27. at about the 34-yard line. Four touchdowns that he had scored before this game tied him for the NFL lead. He had three of them against Cleveland last week. First and 10 at the 33. And back to throw again. Gets it outside to Moorhead. Complete. Moorhead. Out of bounds in front of the bingo bench by Carl Sander, but a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. I tell you, and that could be for hitting McMahon after he threw the ball. You know, one thing, when you know a guy has an injury, that defense is going after him. And they don't always stop when he throws the ball. Oh, it's against the Bears. I still don't know if you're going to protect the quarterbacks, how the guy can complete a pass and him end up on Illegal the ground. use of hands, 74 offense, first down. Sam White, the Bengal coach over on the sideline talking with his offensive unit. Sam is one of those guys who believes in trying to confuse the opponents as much as he possibly can. He's got all kind of secret words and mystery formations and different things that he does. McMahon back again. Trying to set up a screen and does to Peyton. And Peyton is handled. Emmanuel King again is the first bingo to get there. Emmanuel King's a pretty good player. You know, he's just a second-year guy, and he's just starting this time for the first time. But, you know, he's good as a blitzer, and he's good as a linebacker. I mean, he has good range, good tackler. He's been in on a lot of plays so far in this first half. In fact, Mike Ditka was saying he thinks he's their best player. He, he was going to work the other side against Reggie Williams and Ross Browner away from Emmanuel King. Second and 19. Fair ball at their own 24. a timeout. That's two that the Bears have used. They have one left. Mike Dicker said, what was that all about? 
I think what he did, he looked out there at the defense and saw something he didn't like. Next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time here on CBS. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you, 300-pound clubbers hate humidity. It's 100 degrees down there, mate. You talk about sweat. Well, the fridge would be feeling it if he had to be in there playing. Right now. Blado, so he asked Sam White, how big is Blado's now? And he said, oh, he's down to 300. <laughs> you know you're big when you... <laughs> he's getting it down there. He's about 300. Yeah, he's been working hard. He's down to three. Second and 19 now. out of the pocket gets it to the tight end Emory Moorhead again who can't hang on Cincinnati has the ball you heard him yelling ball ball and the guy who was really hustling on that play is Eddie Edwards he's the defensive end he starts to rush and he's going to get back to that's where you call second effort you can see Edwards he's right there in the right hand side of the screen pass run. He's going to come in here working on McMahon. Now watch, McMahon throws the ball. Eddie Edwards turns and runs downfield. Now he gets a tackle. The ball's fumbled, and here comes Edwards, who started on the line of scrimmage. Carl Sander is number 91, who's holding Moorhead and trying to prevent him, and did prevent him from getting back to get the ball. That's heads-up play by Sander, knowing that there was a fumble, and he couldn't do it, and he wasn't going to let Moorhead do it. They're probably deciding now whether that was a reception and a fumble, or if he had control. We have a holding foul against Cincinnati. During the fumble, it's Chicago's ball. They call Xander. What I thought was a head up, heads up play, they called holding and gave the ball back. I don't know about that. I really don't. He's in the process of tackling. Sam White wants an explanation. And so do the fans. I think he wants to talk to the official. The good ones go over and talk to the coach and explain it to him. I mean, it's in there, it's pent up, and you just can't stand there. You have to get it out. And then it doesn't come out easily, so you keep trying to get it out, get more of it out. Volume is not a problem. McMahon the call again. Inside the Bengal 40. Breeden again, the defender. A gain of 14 and another bear first down. Tell you, Jim McMahon says we haven't been using golf enough. If our offense is really going to be opened up, we have to get it to him six or seven times. And he has a pretty good start going on now. He's caught five for 126 in the big long touchdown. 53 yards that one. Quick 
Bradley again. And 10 is for Ortigo. He was under pressure. And Lewis Phillips, the rookie corner. I thought that ball was tipped. Something happened. You know, with McMahon, he doesn't always throw spirals. He'll flutter one out there on you. But I'll tell you one thing, he stands in there with things going on around him. No, that was just his throw, wasn't it? That just, that just fluttered out there like it was tipped. But Look at that thing. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have that follow-through room either. No, no, he didn't. But, you know, he's kind of proud of the fact that he doesn't throw spirals. He said when he hurt his hip, he said it bothered him because he couldn't rotate his hips and he started throwing spirals. He knew something was wrong. And the Bears have taken their third timeout. So there are none left in the first half. Second and ten at the 40. And just under five minutes remaining. Second ten, their own 40. They lead 21-7. Cincinnati has all of their timeouts. The Bears have none of their timeouts. They've used them all. Calvin Thomas was the man in motion. Fake to Payton. Intended for Moorhead, and he's got it. Covered by Dave Fulcher. It's another thing that uh, Mike Ditka said they were going to do last night. Get the ball to the tight ends a little bit more. And that was one of the ways that they wanted to do it. You know, take one of the backs, run them in motion, hoping that a safety would go with them. That time they put it back in motion. The safety didn't go with them, but Emory Moorhead still beat David Fulcher. Hey, Fulcher is one of those guys, a big rookie, 6'3", 230 pounds, playing a safety. Ortigo is wide to the left and Galt is wide to the right. And off to Calvin Thomas. And a flag flies from behind the defensive line of scrimmage. Ball start, 78 offense, first down. Dan Horn. Don't forget coming up at the half, the NFL today, of course, with Brent. Herb and Will McDonough with scores and highlights. And William Andrews' story. What a remarkable comeback he has made. And we've been telling you in the first half, they are polling the fans' opinion of the instant replay. And some of them might have changed their mind after watching this first half today. I hope not. I, I hope that it's something that stays. I think it's good. I think officiating needs it, and you have to give it time to work itself out. We forget it's due. straight ahead. You know, I wonder what we're seeing here, Pat. I wonder if if Matt Suey is injured, or I wonder if they just want to use Calvin Thomas more, or if Calvin Thomas is in the process of becoming a starter in there with Walter Payton. Well, when we asked last night, there's Suey. Mike said we got to get them both. Both Suey and Thomas, we got to use them more. It seems like Thomas has been playing most yeah. of this game today. And he's been running those tough yards. Second and nine at the 25. Thomas has four carries for 18 yards. It'll be Thomas again. Stood up and knocked backwards by Carl Sander after a gain of maybe two. Here again, those phone numbers. And the situation you think should be observed. In current form, yes. In revised form, yes. Or just no. I wonder who you get when you call them. I mean, you get someone who says, hey, 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 good, good choice, or like a menu, or like a waiter, or thank you for your order. Or I, I tried it last night. They said we can't <laughs> accept your call as dialed. They, they probably didn't put it in, though. They today. probably recognized your voice. <laughs> on a blitz. Flags are down far side of the field. Somebody was running loose and staring at Jim McMahon. Somebody came free up the middle. I think a couple of them were running loose. Delay of game. Side. Offense. Start down. I think it was Bussy that broke free up the middle. Well, McMahon's walking over there to the sideline. There was something he didn't like about that play. Maybe it was a bad play against the Blitz, or maybe they got it into him too late. It's third and 13 in any case at 
the Bengal 29 closer to the 28 actually you know that five yard penalty if they don't get a first down or a touchdown here that took five yards off their field goal or made it five yards more I mean and both coaches get the two minute notification the Bears continue to lead 21 then with two minutes to go in the first half two of the Bears had it already for the locker room that of course is Richard Dent he is noticeably limping Suey is waiting at the entrance to the tunnel and he wasn't walking without a limp they say he has a bruised knee well that answers that question yeah flag is down and so is McMahon Bengals might have jumped that. I think that was Barney Bussey again, yeah, wasn't it? So, Number yeah. 27. Looks like he was up there in a safety blitz, and that'll outside. be his second offside. Defense. Third down. So they got that five yards back. That'll make things a little bit easier for Butler if they do have to try a field goal. You know what those guys do? They get up in here. You see them up in here. They get anxious, anxious. They want to beat these guards blocks so they get into the zone. Watch him. He's up here, up here. Then he can't hold it. You see, so he comes in there before Hildenberg snaps the ball. That's one way for the center, or for the safety to beat the center. Go before he snaps it. <laughs> Third and eight. They were blitzing again. The pass was intended for Thomas Sanders, number 20. And the Bears will have to go for the field goal. But they, the, the Bears lost five yards on a penalty. Then they gained the five yards back for Butler's field goal attempt. I think I think here on this time now, this time they do pick up Bussy. You see, he's going to come up there and say, well, he didn't get early enough. Hilgenberg picks him off. They have the thing sealed off pretty well. And McMahon just throws behind Sanders. 41 yards. That was pretty good pass protection. I think Dick was telling him, hey, we had all that picked up for you. Butler's got plenty of distance, and he is right down the middle. That one would have been good from 50. That makes it 24-7. Let's bring you up to date on what's going on around the rest of the league. As Brent Busberger said before, a couple of surprises. Surprisingly. Stanford Jennings will down it in the end zone. The Bengals will come out to the 20 and operate from there with all of their timeouts remaining. Did you ever notice, Pat, about kickers that, that after they kick a field goal, they always pump that ball deeper on the next kickoff? Was there something you guys had in the club or something that does that to you? I mean, you have sayings or anything? I forgot. <laughs> Butler knows it, but those guys, I mean, I think when you kick a field goal and everyone's congratulating you, I think you get pumped up. Then I think that same pumped up brings you out on I the think, next kickoff. I think that's probably right. Fumble on the exchange between Remington and Esiason, and all they can do is fall on it. It'll bring up the second down. I tell you, I bet Esiason is thinking all these guys say the Bears aren't as good, they're, they're winning ugly, they're not playing as hard. But he's saying right now, who are you kidding? I think the Bengals, they don't have to go to these quick huddles. They can use their timeouts. Sure. They have three timeouts. A minute left in the first half. The Siason goes back again. Has Eddie Brown. They've got to take one, and Collinsworth does signal for the timeout with 52 seconds left to play in the first down. Bengals at their own 36. Johnson.
takes a hit from Singletary. You'll remember that one. I'll tell you, as a group, I think when you take a Mike Singletary and a Wilbur Marshall and Otis Wilson, that's the best group of linebackers in the NFL. Maybe in the NFL for a long time. They're all quick. Side Johnson, and he gets out of bounds. After a gain of only three or four, Sean Gale it was the bear who made the contact. Johnson was trying to get out of bounds. Sean Gale was trying to get over there not to let him get out of bounds. They just got his foot out of Gale's grasp. I'll tell you one thing about these, you know, these bear guys. I mean, the linebackers, they're all hitters. Oh, you yeah. got a Gary Fensick back there and a Dave Dewerson and then Todd Bell is on the team. Sure. Of course, he has a full muscle now, but he's one of the big hitters in the game. Incomplete. Good coverage by the Bears' Reggie Phillips. Intended for Collinsworth. You know, the Bengals do have a play on fourth down, Pat, and it's coming up now. Fourth down is coming up now where Esiason punched the ball. They aren't going to do it. We see that they're putting Jeff Hayes in, but they do have that where they make you look like they're going to fourth down, and then Esiason punts it. Coming up at the half, the NFL today with Brent, Irv, and Will, and scores and highlights. Jeff Hayes back to punt. Bears don't have enough guys in there. They only got 10 guys. Hayes is a pretty good athlete. Gets it on the run and knocks it out of bounds. Flag is down upfield. 26 yard punt. You know what happened on that play? The Bears left their defense in there, thinking they may go for it. I don't think the refrigerator knew about that defense punt return. He ran off. The Bears only had 10 men on the field, but the penalty is going to go against the Bengals. I would think they'd just turn it down. I would think so. They don't have any timeouts left, so they're not going to do much. Only five seconds remaining, and Fensick signals they do want to turn it down. Bengal receivers! Members of the kicking team illegally downfield. The penalty is declined. First down. It's pretty hard not to go downfield when the punter starts to run out of there. You don't know if he's going to run or not. That's usually the thing that you see when a guy breaks the timing because those linemen are up there. They're counting like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then they go. And they count and they go. They don't know what's happening behind them. 24-7 in a long first half. Passing, penalties, turnovers. It costs, causes long, long halves. Bears took advantage of turnovers early. And then they got a bomb from McMahon to call. Five seconds remain. And off to Peyton. Peyton around the corner with Blocker. Peyton with that high step. Time. So that's the end of the half. Well, you know, the other thing that's very impressive to me is we can say that these are Cincinnati's turnovers or Esiason's interceptions, but this Bear defense is playing the way we saw it last year. And people say, what's wrong with the Bears? From what I've seen, nothing's wrong with the Bears. They're about what they were last year. They just look just about as intimidating. I don't know if Richard Dent will come back. We don't know about Suey yet. We'll try to find out as soon as we can. But uh, I didn't think that was an ugly first half at all by the Bears. Well, and a big part of it, of course, is having Jim McMahon back at quarterback. That would... Back at Riverfront. The walk back from the locker room, and who belongs to those feet? Who else? You know, as you look up from the feet, the uh, Bridges' thighs are starting to grow together on them a little. You see that? I mean, there's not much... Uh, space in there until you get down to the knee area. <laughs> I used to have a, a player, Art Shell, who I never weighed, and the only thing I'd look at him walk from behind, and when the thighs started to grow together, you know, when you didn't see a little gap in there where you could see some daylight, I'd say, Art, you gotta, you gotta lose a little weight. <laughs>
Cincinnati will receive the second half kickoff trailing 24 7. Kevin Butler will kick off for the Bears and he's been popping them in the end zone all day long. Tim McGee and Stanford Jennings back deep for Cincinnati. Butler will get the second half underway. Now he hits a line drive. by Jim Morrissey number 51 cuts him down 23 yard return this is what it looks like for a special teams guy you just come out of the locker room you have to run down guys are going to hit you hold you you got to keep your feet always stay up they grab you to try and put you down stay up get by the blockers then make the tackle good job by Morrissey you know, those guys, they don't get much attention. You never talk, but if there's ever a big play against the special team, I'll guarantee you they talk about it. They get attention then. First down, Cincinnati at their own 23. Johnson is still the fullback. That's Brooks and Wilson. Hollinsworth. Bingo first down to their own 38, a gain of 13. Gary Finsick stop number 80. I bet what Sam White's did is try and calm his team down a little. You know, get their nervousness out of the way. I think they came out the first half, they were a little too excited. I think they said, you know, we just have to take our game plan and just go about it the way we intended to. We don't have to get all fired up, jump off sides, have balls hitting off our heads and stuff like that. Just get under control. Well, they came out throwing Johnson the lone setback. by Wilbur Marshall. With Brooks had Marshall, that, that makes a linebacker run. Look, Marshall gives a little smile. We had to run a long way on that one because Brooks started in the slot. He wasn't in the backfield. He's normally a halfback. He was in a slot that time like a wide receiver. Marshall was lined up on him like a defensive back. There are a lot of people who say he could play defensive back. Well, he's kind of a combination. You know, when he covers you, he's like a defensive back. When he blitzes, like a linebacker and when he hits you it's like a lineman pretty good pretty good parley there now he got a lot of good parts there's a good part Coleman was the man in motion Sison will have it picked off that's Durson Durson's got some blocking in front of him and flag penalty marker goes down as Durson gets to the Bengal 42 yard line interceptions now for Esiason. When Esiason has his problems, he throws high. And I think it's, you know, he doesn't get the right projection on the ball. The one before he threw high to Brooks, that one he threw high, looking like he was just trying to throw it away. Disregard the flag, there is no foul. I like that, disregard the flag, there is no foul. When you worry about it, when they say disregard the flag, there was no flag. But you see here, he's feeling the pressure right there, a Singletary coming. You see him, so he can't step and follow through. And he kind of goes, then his receiver falls down, and there's Dewerson right there. But that ball was a little behind and a little high anyway. And Ken Anderson begins to loosen up behind the Bengal bench. Along with Doug Gaynor, the Bengals' third quarterback, number 11. Fumble. And the Bears get it back, I believe. I think Van Horn is the man who covered it, yes. Well, knowing Mike Ditka, when you put in a rookie back and the first time he carries, he fumbles, he comes out. I would bet you Anderson goes off the field. He's gone. Mike Ditka is the time that gives you about one of those. Those things are, you know, things you know you got a good team, and maybe other teams can't beat you the only way they can if you beat yourself. That was only the second rushing attempt of the season. It'll make it second down, 14. Calvin Thomas has replaced Anderson. McMahon 
swings a throw to Moorhead, and he has him at the 25. Ray Horton took him out of bounds, and McMahon is slow getting to his feet. A gain of 21. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he got that shoulder pad, the one he was talking about last night, not the hit on it, but the hit going down. You know, you see him here, he comes reverse, he finds, he finds Moorhead there, he steps up and throws. Now, the ball's gone, I don't know. You see, see how he hit there on his right arm and his shoulder? That's the one that he's worried about. Now, they have to protect quarterbacks in this league. I don't care what they say, I'm talking about any quarterback. You can't hit them after they throw it. And they let that go on, they let it go on, and you got guys down all over the league. Stayed long enough to complete that pass for a first down to Moorhead. There to Bingo, 25. Peyton swings in motion. They give it to Thomas, straight ahead, almost to the 20. Leo Parker made the stop, a pick up a four. I tell you, these offensive linemen are doing a, a good job over there. You know, of, of handling this Bengal defense now. I think it early they were a little fired up. Now I think the that offensive line has it pretty well under control. Second and a little bit over five. Man said he had a talk with the guys who called him the boys. He said he said, hey boys, we got to get the job done tomorrow. Well, you're second in the NFL in rushing. You can't be doing too bad. Too. That was not illegal. No, no, but you would like to, as a coach, you'd like to take credit for it. But I think that happened when one guy thought he got it, the other guy got it, the guy that thought he had it blocked. Butler's extra point is good, and it's 31 7. The Bears over the Bengals. If this was their toughest test so far, they passed it. Coming up at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time in CBS Sports coverage of America's Polo Championship. Best of Argentina, who are considered to be the best team in the world against the best of North America. Championship Polo coming up later today, right here on CBS. 31-7, the Bears lead it with 11.20 left to play third quarter. McMahon, by the way, is 13 out of 21 for 211 yards and three touchdowns. And he scored the other one on the quarterback's team. Chases him deep. Stay in there. Kim McGee obeys. Watch that touchdown to Moorhead. Here's Moorhead right here. He's going to run a short out. Here's Ortigo. He thinks he's getting the ball. He's running in here as he runs by. He thought it was behind him. Then he picks off the next defender, and that lets Moorhead go into the end zone. Watch him here. We see Ortigo outside. He's working there. He comes in. He thinks he's getting it there. And then Moorhead comes right in front of him. Ortigo runs a legal pick and gets a good block. But I'll tell you, the thing that made it all possible is right here. Here the Bengals are bringing seven. They got the blitz. They pick it up up the middle. Good block by the back. And McMahon had plenty of time on that one. No one near him. Esiason is still a quarterback. And he retreats to throw again. Hit by Hampton. And McMichael. And down he goes. Second sack. Ken Anderson looking on with Sam White. And signaling the plays into Esiason. Cincinnati turnovers. Interception and a touchdown. Three touchdowns came after interceptions. That's the thing we talk about, you know, about how turnovers will kill you. If, if you can give a turnover and then stop the other team, that's okay. When you give it and then they score a touchdown, that's 21 points to turnover. Right. Sison back to throw again and fires to Collinsworth. Collinsworth hammers outside the 30 to the 35 for a first down to 
before Singletary takes it down. A gain of 20. New Orleans still leads the Giants in the third quarter, 17-13. Washington over Seattle. Both those clubs unbeaten go again. Sad days for Forrest Gregg and Don Shula. Buddy Ryan, you know, they were ready to bury old Buddy oh, up yeah. there, but I didn't know that he was supposed to win. I mean, he starts off and he plays the Redskins, who are one of the best teams in the NFC. Then he has to play the Bears, who are world champion. Then Denver, who may be the best team in the AFC. Headed for Eddie Brown. And far overthrown. Dewerson and Fensick were back there with Brown. Everybody. Well, that was one of those that they knew they were going to go for that someplace. But when you're down as many points as they are, when it's 31 to 7, then the Bears are just playing soft back there in their secondary. We have to try and get Eddie Brown deep on something like that is when Fensick's trying to come up when he's going to go for the play fake. Brown comes out and McGee replaces him. Let's see if they try to go deep to him now. If they have time. get a first down for an NFL update. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Pat, Tommy Kramer is having himself a whale of an afternoon. This is his sixth touchdown pass for the Minnesota Vikings. And that one was for Mike Malarkey from seven yards. The last man to throw seven was Joe Cap, and that was back in 1969 for the Vikings. Let's go back to Pat and John. Brent, there was a penalty on that last play. And Otis Wilson. Holding 58 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Let's see what happened to Wilson. He just limped out. Well, the penalty was against Wilbur Marshall for holding. The injury, we see Otis Wilson is coming on a, on a blitz. And he was coming to the inside, and it looked like he got his right foot caught in the carpet. You see, that is one of those things where your foot gets caught, and the only thing that gives is one of your joints, either your knee or ankle joint. Al Harris, by the way, has taken... Otis Wilson's place. You might recall he held out the entire season last year. Reverse fake by Brooks. And Brooks gets into Bear Country. Those Vikings pouring on the points. Kramer approaching Joe Cap's record next Sunday on CBS. It begins at 12.30 with the NFL today, and that's our featured first game, Minnesota against these same Chicago Bears in Chicago. You know, Tommy Kramer is one of those quarterbacks that's capable of throwing five touchdown passes. Although this guy here, Boomer Esiason, is too. Durson showing blitz, and they get it to that spot. Stanford Jennings, out of bounds by Wilbur Marshall. what coaches are talking about when they talk about a hot receiver we see Stanford Jennings he just lets the the blitzer go then there's then they feel there's no one to cover him so he let Dewerson go who he probably should have blocked but then Esiason sees it and says if he didn't block him then there has to be someone open now Dewerson is going to be number 22 he's outside he's outside and then he came so he just threw the ball out to him is inside the 10 now. It'll be second down coming up. So in that last play, that one to Stanford Jennings, I never really liked that. You know, that hot receiver type of thing that yeah. if they come, then, you know, a guy will be open because that means if you don't get the ball off, the only guy to take on that blitzer is the quarterback, the quarterback. himself. The Bears had two guys coming to that side that time, Dewerson and Otis Wilson, who's back in the game. 
second down. Five. Ball at the seven. Brown goes in motion. Hollingsworth, the intended receiver. Reggie Phillips did a good job covering. I think after this game, the Bengals are going to figure that Reggie Phillips is a better player coming out of the game than they thought going in. I mean, he covers Collingsworth. That's perfect defense down there. Where you hit the guy, you know, to hold him up a little, then he starts going in, you ride right in, and you stay underneath him a little so you can knock the ball down and get the interception. This guy's playing pretty well. As all day. You know, when they lost Leslie Frazier, who was injured in the Super Bowl, he's really been out all year, they thought that was going to be one of their weaknesses. But I think he's getting more confident as the season goes on. Apparent. Almost picked off in the end zone by Mike Richardson. That'll bring up a fourth down situation. You know, that's another time that a Cincinnati receiver slipped. I think that because of this weather down there, this, this for one reason, is a slippery field. You see Eddie Brown, he was just trying to make a cut to the out, and boom, he did the split. And we had one earlier. Remember the right. reception when the receiver fell down? Well, they tell us at this end of the field, which is field sector in baseball is always more slippery than the other part. It doesn't get much sun. Fourth and five. Sides and can't find anybody. Falls down. And Al Harris is on top of him. It has not been a good day for the Boomer. That's the third a boomer today and he's had four interceptions we watch here he had plenty of time plenty of time good pass protection so that'd be that just no one open he couldn't find anyone then he went to scramble and fell down and there was al harris 31 7 the bears lead at their own 15. side got eight yards before Carl Zander brought him down Bears will probably keep it on the ground as much as they can now well and this is where their offensive line goes to work you know they were talking about wearing down and this humidity and so on but these guys are still doing a good job in there you know getting some movement on that Bengal defensive line and, and giving Thomas room in there to run the ball loose obviously not successful you know one thing you you know you take a quarterback like Jim McMahon and you know he throws three touchdown passes and he scores on a quarterback sneak but other things help an offense sometimes just having the guy there and the way he handles the huddle the way he calls the play the way he does the cadence you know sometimes these things give an offense a big lift that's hard to believe but I know it's true the cadence is a factor some of the, you know, great, I mean, that was one of Kenny Stabler's greatest things, was handling that huddle, being the boss, the field general. Billy Kilmer, third one. Peyton tried to come back for McMahon's pass. Fulcher on the coverage, and the Bears will have to punt. Well, Fulcher had the coverage, but McMahon said I should have put a little something on it, because Fulcher had his back turned, the ball hit him right in the head. You know, that's one way to cover, I guess. You can either, you know, cover the guy or just run with him. Here's Peyton coming out. Number 33 is Fulcher. Watch him. He doesn't even see the ball. He looks back. Well, it didn't hit him in the head. He didn't bounce. There. Didn't reach it. Laurie Buford into punt. And Mike Martin back deep for the Bengals. I think McMahon can sometimes throw it as well as the best and sometimes throw it about as poorly as the worst. He's everywhere in between. <laughs> he said last night, I... I threw the ball well in practice, but I can still throw the wobbler. <laughs> and when he throws too well, he worries about it. Buford gets off a good punt. There's a penalty 
marker down. He did signal for the fair catch. He says he did. He put his hand up. There's no doubt about it. Of course, it's right there. There's where he signaled. He started to run. Then he signaled. Then he had to make an adjustment. Then he forgot that he'd signaled. Then he started to run with it. And that's a penalty, running with the ball after you give a fair signal catch. Delay. Receiving team. First down. He still doesn't believe he signaled. <laughs> but he did. Next Sunday on CBS, that's the featured first game. Of course, the NFL today starts at 12.30. Here's Esaias and back to throw. Swings it outside to Johnson. Johnson gets just short of the 30. Dave Durson up to make the stop along with Otis Wilson. A gain of five. Yeah, I think these guys are holding up pretty well under that heat down there. You know, before the game was 110 degrees down in the field. And you can see what they do. They go to the sideline. They always get the ice, the cold towels, drink plenty of fluid. And it looks like to me that both sidelines are doing a good job of, of keeping the players relatively fresh. Steve Fuller, the Bears' backup quarterback, was just loosening up. Second and five for Cincinnati at their own 28. Almost picked off again. Intended for Rodney Holman. Gary Fensick broke it up. Over there in the sideline now, they're putting an ice pack or an ice bag on Jim McMahon's shoulder. Now, that could be two things. One, we did see him hurt it again when he fell on that right arm. Or two, it could just be like they do with baseball pitchers. You know, after a guy after a guy pitches and he's not going to play anymore, they get ice right on his arm or his shoulder. Now, I think it's smart if you know, that's what it is. You know, you got a good lead. The game's under control, 31-7. to seven. You don't need him anymore and get him out of the game. I don't think he'll be back. Back to throw again. Chased by McMichael. Gets away from him. Trying to go deep. And again, it's incomplete. Mike Richardson was the main defender. He got an assist from Fensick. I'll tell you, this, this bear defense has gotten these Bengals down to just throwing jump balls. I mean, I think that they've really stopped them on everything. I think they have them totally confused and frustrated right now. It sure looks like it. And the crowd's getting a little restless now. There's McMahon. The ice pack on his shoulder. Jeff Hayes in the punt to Lou Barnes. out of bounds at about midfield. Joe Kelly knocked him out of bounds. Straight ahead, Peyton. In the Bengal territory, about their 48. Mike Hammerstein made the stop. Philadelphia is still overpowering Los Angeles. Houston over Pittsburgh by three now. Kenny Anderson, who was so good for so many years, now is the backup and almost an assistant coach. Thomas again in motion. And the pitch is back to Walter. Fulcher brought him down. There's McMahon again. Now what they're saying, Pat, is this is strictly precautionary. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't a an injury or a re-injury. I think that's a smart thing to do. You know, he hasn't played. In fact, he hasn't played much uh, all year, including the preseason or during the season. You get him in and get him out of there because if they're going to repeat, and I think they have a good chance to repeat, this guy has to be underneath the center. Third and two. Still running. Thomas will not get the first down. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. The Bears will have to punt. Richie Williams led the defenders. In fact, 
fact, I'm a little surprised that Walter Payton is still in there. I think that I think that he's another guy that, that you have to get a little rest. I mean, it's going to be a long season. Here's Payton now. And you know, you see him come in there and throw that block, although he missed on Reggie Williams. Out of a ball, it takes more out of a ball carrier blocking than it does running. He says he enjoys it more than running. Oh, he loves the block. He loves that big block. Mike Martin. Back deep for Cincinnati. It looks like we will get Ken Anderson when the Bengals get the ball back. Let it bounce. And it goes into the end zone. Buford's punt is 43 yards. Anderson goes in the game. Front Stadium in Cincinnati. Pat Summerall with John Madden. And the Bears have been in command from the very beginning. Took advantage of turnovers early. And they've just dominated since then. Just over three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. And the Bears leading it 31-7. Bengals at their own 20 with Ken Anderson the quarter. gets three or four before he is knocked in the other direction by the Bear defense led by Dan Hampton and William Perry. I tell you, that Bear defense has really done a job. You know, when you can stop a team running, and the Bengals haven't been able to run all day, they've only, they run for, their, their running backs have run for 19 yards. Now, then, then you can do everything else. And if you can't run the ball, it's very tough to have any kind of offense. Of course, they lost Canterbury early. That had him hurt. Brooks in motion as Anderson goes back to throw. Gets it out to Brooks. And Brooks is out of bounds by Otis Wilson. Otis Wilson is still talking to him here. He said to Brooks, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> That's a big thing. You know, you always ask him when someone's talking, they're going this and that. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? So what? Now there is Kennebrew in. I think Kennebrew now and uh, Ken Anderson is going to be too much too late. You're down 31 to 7. Say to the coach, what do you want me to do? Win it or tie it? Third and one. Kennebrew is close, but it's going to be very close. It looked like right at the end, the way they're going to spot it, it looked like he got the first down. Important first downs are here, though. Looked like they had him stopped on the line, and then he made one more little surge. See, he hits in there. Looked like they had him stopped here. But see, they didn't get him going backward. You see, Harris started to go and got chipped off. Then Kinnebrew was able to get the ball for a first down beyond that line. It's just beyond that line. Brooks and Kinnebrew then. Kennebrew stays to block. And complete. Single carry on the coverage, and a penalty marker goes down. Boy, that looked like a late one. That, that looked like the home crowd talked the official into that one. Because at first they didn't call it. Single Terry was on him. And then the crowd started to yell, and then boom, that flag came out. Number 50, touchdown. Maybe the official had it get stuck in his pocket or something, but that was what you call a late flag. First down. Let's see if we can see it here. Here's Singletary, 50, right here in the middle of the screen right now. See him cover, and he makes a hit there. Looked like the receiver started to fall down. He just tackled him. There was no flag there, and then it comes later. I thought that was pretty good. Flag was late. out of sync. The man in motion, Stanford Jennings. 74 offense. Stop. And Brian Blados moved early. Still first down, but it'll be first and 15. Well, you know, they've been blitzing from that side, inside and outside of Blados all day. That's where Otis Wilson has been working. That's where yeah, we saw Dave Dewerson come. I think he was trying to get set for picking up a blitz again. See Wilson just outside him. And complete. And 
Anderson intended for college work. What you were talking about, John. Well, yeah, we see that they've, you know, they've tried to run the ball 10 times, but they've only gained 22 yards. And in order to pass and to get things deep and to move the ball around, you have to obviously do much better than that. So that's on the Bengals side, but on the on the Bear defensive side, they've caused that to happen. And your leading rusher has 11 yards. You're not going to win many games. down by Mike Richardson. That was a funny thing. Wilbur Marshall was blitzing on that play. Anthony Munoz, his left tackle of the Bengals, maybe the best tackle in the league, had him kind of up on him, and he just he just rode him right by Anderson. It was, it was old Marshall. He was taking a ride by Munoz, and he just went both feet off the ground. Took right a little, by the quarterback. A swipe yeah. at Anderson. And will bring up third and 15. The two minutes left third quarter. Here's Anderson again. Out of bounds. Collinsworth made the catch. But not with both feet in bounds. He was still a great catch, though. You know, Chris Collinsworth is probably the most popular of the Bengals. See him there. That's a great catch. I mean, he didn't have the, the feet in bounds and control, but he still did catch the ball. And when you're down 31 to 7, you look for anything. In fact, Collinsworth just getting off the field now kept the ball. <laughs> Hayes to punt. Now, this is a good one. Barnes back at about the 14. Eric Cadis got an arm out, number 84, and tripped him up. And the Bears take over. Leading 31 to 7. Yes. He really is remarkable. Well, he's what linemen are made about. Yeah. The type of guy you get there in the trenches, nose tackles over you, you butt heads all day. Intended incomplete. And the direction of golf. Clay Pickering also one of the receivers down. I'll tell you, there's a getup, and that getup will get more extravagant as the game goes on. He got the headband now outside the towel. He got the thing. Now, he took the shoulder pads off. He likes that because now his arms look bigger. You see, so now he got the water. He'll get the... He's working up an outfit there that will be outrageous by the time this game is over. I'll guarantee you. It's not already? No, it's getting there. He's working on outrageous. He's working on weird. Pretty good weird. Fuller chased and now comes out of the pocket and throws the golf. For another Bear first down at about the 37 yard line. A gain of 19 to Willie Galt. Well, they said last night that if they're going to be a real offense, they have to get the ball to Galt. Jim McMahon says we'll get it to him six or seven times. That was his sixth reception today for 145 yards. And this is a way to work speed. In today's football, the dominant offensive player, other than a quarterback, is going to be the speed wide receiver. Now, he's the guy that makes you, when you're a defensive coach, that makes you have some sleepless nights during the week. speed too. Yeah, it's that same pattern. In fact, he's talking to the official now about it, something that's happening. But you see, he starts over on the right side. He's going to come up. Now he's going to come across towards us. He's going to come all the way across the field. Now he can get open there or over here, and he just keeps trying to find a lane. Now he's trying to make a little move. He can't. A little weak straight arm, like that ballet thing we saw he was right, in. Right. Then you step out of bounds. That's called a pirouette or something. Pirouette. <laughs> pirouette. Pirouette. Are you sure? You're away. Whatever. Or again, intended for call. Hit by Lewis Phillips. And they're going to get Phillips on that one now. I think what they're going for is his going for the head of golf. Not hitting him late, but it's hitting him in the head. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 24 defense. 
looked okay to me. I mean, you got to be able to do something. I didn't. I thought he clubbed him in the head or something. Look at Sam White. He got some sweat going yes, there. Yes, he does. I mean, I think he's probably saying the same thing. Hey, you have to let him do something. I agree with that. I don't think that that can be a penalty. I mean, he was in bounds. It wasn't late. It wasn't in the head. I don't know what he did wrong. Phillips is still arguing. Well, they haven't settled anything yet. line of scrimmage to give him a 15 yard penalty. Now they put it inside the Bingle 20 all the way down to the 19. And that's enough for a bear first down. I think that was a bad call. I think the guy thought he saw something that wasn't there. Well he was right on the spot. He was right by. Cincinnati's been penalized 10 times for 70 yards. Pickering that makes Bingle in motion for the bear. Sanders still struggling at Sanders all the way down to about the one Bobby Kemp and Carl Sander finally got him down but it was a task that's some run there well I think the one thing you know the Bengals wanted to wear out the Bears it looks like to me that the Bears have worn out the Bengals you know, they're still picking them off. That defense isn't as fresh. They're not getting across. They're not pursuing as well as they did. There's holes in there that weren't there earlier. First and goal for the Bears at the Bengal one-yard line. The Bears already lead 31-7. to seven. Going for more. Sanders again. I still haven't seen a single. No, there is yet. no signal. The Bears are going for a field goal. Mike Ditka was really upset when he sent his field goal team in there. It's got to be a touchdown. Oh, it is a touchdown. He be. was upset when he sent his extra point team in there. <laughs> like, ah, the heck with it. He set him in. He set his extra point team in. There was never any signal that I saw. Butler hits the extra point, but there's a penalty marker down. Well, here's a replay of the touchdown. We'll see, they're all bunched well, in there. Well, on the defensive team, the point is good. We penalized on the kickoff. Oh, yeah, he got over. He was up there in the air. That, that ball broke the plane. There's Steve McMichael playing tight end on offense. That's the first time I've seen that. You see, the rule is that the ball has to break the plane. And he did. So he got the touchdown. I don't know that they really signaled that a lot. The Bengals didn't know it. They got their defense in for the extra point. Right. They got him in late. Three guys ran in late. They ended up with 12. Well, that showed that, what, what was that, 74% were really for the instant replay right. in some form. That's the way I feel, too. Out of the end zone is Butler kicked off from the 40. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Bears 38, the Bengals 7. Butler standing on the flag. <laughs> flag. He was trying to hide it. Look, look, he's out there. He's trying to hide it. There's another one. Yep. They're probably throwing it on Butler because he was hiding the flag. <laughs> See, that's the way kickers think. You know, they play a card game. Butler plays McMahon, Hampton, and those guys. And cheating is okay if you don't get caught. And they play the next thing. So that's the big part of the game is just you cheat and get away with it. So Butler carried over that, see? And he thought if the guy throws a flag and I stand on it, they won't see Offsides, it. Offsides, number 80 on the kicking team, free kick. I'm surprised it wasn't Butler that was offsides. He thought he could get away with it. Yeah, but a kicker can't get offsides, can he? I always wondered about that with the soccer kickers, soccer style kickers, because their left foot does go in front of the ball. Yeah, and they let them get away with that, though. That's one thing that they give the soccer style kickers. So that rule goes back to what you were talking about. You cheat, you get away with it, it's okay. They'll bring 
this one back. McGee. He goes down at about the 28-yard line. Dan Reigns. Again, that is the end of the third quarter. With the score 38 to 7 Bears. We now pause for a word from your local. Anderson at quarterback going deep for Collinsworth. And he came up with it. Or came down with it. Gary Fensick. A gain of 47. Hey, Ken Anderson, 16 years in the league, he can still get it out there. And that was a great catch by Collinsworth. Boy. I mean, that was all hands. He was slipping. He was down on one leg and just put his hands out there and caught it. Boy, you look at him without those pads on. It looks like if somebody hit him, he'd break in two. Yeah, He's a tough guy. a lot to him. He sure is. I think he has good speed. He can run. Anderson intended uh, or in the direction of Kennebrew, who can't obviously run that fast now. They have gotten 37 yards on the ground today. That includes a couple of scrambles by Siason. And their season average has been 160.7. I'll tell you, that's a, in baseball, they'd call that a shutout. It's close to a no-hitter. Here's Boomer Esiason. Been a long day for him. And uh, the man standing to his left, the coach, Sam White. Second and 10 from the 30. Anderson back to throw. Intended for Eddie Brown. Covered by Reggie Phillips. Again. Yeah, yesterday it was it was uh, interesting when when Ken Anderson brought his son in Matt. Remember we did the Super Bowl down there in Detroit and after the game the 49ers beat the Bengals and one of the last pictures we had was Ken Anderson carrying his young son off. It was about four or five then. And now now he came to practice yesterday 11 years old. You think this you've grown in that time a little bit. Singletary, who read things right, and it is. Hey, that group of linebackers with Otis Wilson in there, Wilbur Marshall, and Mike Singletary, you don't fool them. I think there's a penalty on this play. I don't know that there wasn't a face mask at the end here. Let's watch it. Singletary comes through. I don't know. It looks like he got a, a hand on that face mask there. That'll be one of those five-yard kind, I think. But the flag is way back face here. Face mask. Yep. You know, they have two kinds of face mask penalties. Yeah. One is five yards if you don't mean it, and one is 15 yards if you really grab it and try and twist his head around. Third down and 10 for Cincinnati. They are at the fair 30, trailing 38-7. go to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Pat, it took a while, but the New York Giants have taken their first lead in the game against the pesky New Orleans Saints. It was Sims to Moat, and the Giants lead for the first time. It is 20 to 17, fourth quarter. Let's go back to Pat and John. Well, it's 38-7 here. The Bears in control from the very beginning. Fourth down, and Anderson and the Bengals will go for it. Bears are coming on a blitz. Wilbur Marshall got there just as Anderson got rid of the ball. Mike Martin, the intended receiver, and the Bears will take over. I'll tell you one thing. I mean, a couple things that I've noticed today about the Bear defense is they're using a lot more of that Bear look, that 46 look. 
I notice they're going back more to blitzing a lot, and they're playing a lot more aggressively today than they have thus far this season. They have changed the name of it, but it's the same thing. They call it the Bear defense now, but it's still the 46. With the back over on this side, this guard has to take him. The tackle turns out on him, and there's no one to block Wilbur Marshall. But the guard blocks his man, tackle blocks his man. Who's going to block 58? The only guy for him is Anderson. Oof. And you've been around as long as Anderson, and this is an artificial surface field. Those can sting a bit. a yard. A little engagement going on on the other side of the field. Pickering and somebody, Lewis Breeden, they played together here for Cincinnati for two years. They're not playing together now. Well, you know, Pickering had something to say about the Bengals. He, he said that the problem are the coaches here and and so on, and they cut him, and the coaches didn't tell him about it. Uh, I mean, the head coach didn't, Sam White didn't, the offensive coordinator did. He said he left here with some hard feelings. I wonder if maybe the Bengals didn't read that and have some hard feelings about Pickering. Second and nine. I would not be surprised if that's not a factor. Lou Barnes is split wide to the left, and Pickering wide to the right. They give again to Sam. Into the secondary. Sanders at that some speed. He's gone. Good night. 75 yards. has four carries for 95 yards, two touchdowns. And the Bears have outrushed the Bengals 186 yards to 27. Butler will kick off. Stanford Jennings. To about the 22. Let's watch his touchdown again. Here's the good block, I think. Jim Covert, he gets Browner inside. Then the fullback here, he comes, Calvin Thomas. He kicks out Reggie Williams that gives this lane for Sanders to run the touchdown in. Watch him, let's tackle Covert. He'll take Browner to the inside. Now watch the block right there. Boom, the kick out, and there's a hole for Sanders. That's all he needed. by the way, caught one pass today I know about. Touchdown pass, and that ties him for the all-time NFL record for games in which he caught a pass. Ties him with Harold Carmichael. Second down. Anderson rolls right. Throws back to Collinsworth, who is Still down while the rest of 
Wilson are in a shedding match. Well, Dave Remington thought that Reigns shouldn't have hit him that hard. Collinsworth hasn't gotten up yet. Reigns put the hit on Collinsworth. And then Dave Remington, the center, comes in. Now, there's Collinsworth catching the ball. There's Reigns with a hit. That's just a hard hit. And he rolls him over. He's trying to get the ball. Now watch Remington comes, and he grabs Reigns by the head. The face man. Collinsworth really took a hit. Hey, I think he got, it looks like he has a shoulder there, but I think he got that on the original hit, not on that end thing where Reigns was trying to get the ball from him. Caught six passes for 116 yards. He's been just about the only thing that's worked today. The guy that's been the you know the guy that coming through for this Bengal team for years. Remember the the Super Bowl right. year he had the big year. Washington remains unbeaten. Seattle doesn't. The Redskins beat them 1914. Yeah, I think the the Redskins are one of the best teams in the NFC, and for some reason. They're again kind of the Rodney Dangerfields of the NFL. I mean, everyone talks about the other teams, and you just forget to talk about the Redskins. They really don't get a lot of respect, but they play that solid football. They Good really coaching. have played the uh, solid. Stanford Jennings got the first down. Steve McMichael on the stop. 44 to 7, the Bears leading. The other side of the field is reasonably happy. The refrigerator. You know, the fridge hasn't been playing lately. I don't know if they just took him out uh, or if he's hurt or what. You know, in last Monday night's game, he dislocated a kneecap. His kneecap came up his leg. Right. And they had to push it back into the joint. I don't know if that's why he's not playing or just the way they're playing defense. Probably just a rest. The word is that there is nothing wrong with Perry. Johnson, the pass receiver, hit by Jim Morrissey. Tell you what, these backup linebackers for the Bears look pretty good, too. Morrissey, Rivera. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Say... He got his weight down where they wanted it, and then he went home for two weeks. Yeah, he's a, he looks like he's tipping in those, tipping those Toledos around 325, 330. But he knows how to rest. You see him? He's just yeah. sitting on that bench and kind of spread out there. Johnson, the ball carrier. That's the Bengals' longest rush of the day, a gain of 14. Sean Gale made the stop. Well, we see that... Hartenstein is in there now. Mike Hartenstein, he's been playing quite a bit. We see Wachter is in there. Still McMichael. Yeah, McMichael. I think he's the guy that forget about Hampton and McMichael play all the time. The refrigerator's out because he's resting. Richard Dent is out, of course, because he pulled a groin muscle early in that first half. On first down, Anderson is back. Jackson. It's Bears ball. They call it back to where the struggle with the receiver took place. That's five interceptions by the Bears secondary. And that's the one I would give to Dan Hampton now. I think Hampton has more to do with that secretary, with, with that uh, interception than did Bestie. 44 to 7 with 9.03 left. Tough day on one side of the field and a great day on that side of the field. Steve Jackson, who just made the interception. See what he has in his left hand there? Got that ball with that interception. He's getting, he took know, it away, right. Anytime you're a rookie like that and you're going to you get your first interception, that's in a game, you just keep that ball, and then you write, you know, game ball, Cincinnati, intercepted, and all that stuff. It's 
been so long since this contest started. You remember when we started? It was 110 degrees on the field. Yet I haven't seen anyone that came down with what looked like exhaustion or anything like that. Well, I think that both sidelines have done a good job at that. I mean, I think they've, you know, they've had the ice out there. They've had the towels. They've had the headbands and all those things to keep the players cool. Hampton's had a long day. I think he's, he's been the guy that's been out there every play. Neil Anderson and Calvin Thomas, the two running backs. And they give us to Anderson. Their number one draft choice. Had a little problem holding on to the ball today, but I imagine Mike Ditka, or in fact, he said, we've got to give him some work. He's the kind of guy you don't want to keep on the bench. Well, it's tough when you have a rookie and he's number one draft choice and he's coming in playing his first year, but he missed the training camp. Right. And that's that's when they really learn the basis of the offense. That's when they get all their techniques down, their conditioning, uh, the timing and so on. And to be fair to Neil Anderson, he, he missed all that. By Joe Kelly and Thomas is close to a first down. You see, they take Jim Covert out of the offensive line and Mark Forge, but they keep Jay Hilgenberg in there. Keep the old center in there, just put him in there. Don't forget about him. In fact, I don't think they have him in there now. <laughs> I think that may be Larry Rubens. Yeah, they did. They did take the center out. They usually, they usually forget about the center. Yeah, you, know, you just leave it in. You take guards and tackles out. They still got Thayer in there. Van Horn is still in there. Right. Kurt Becker is playing now. Thomas again. Getting down after a gain of perhaps one by Ron Simpkin. You know what? Rubens may be young, but he knows how to get that jersey on, doesn't he? Yeah, like yep, a center. Yep, you get it on as tight as you can so they don't have anything to grab. He gets a little help there from the tight end who comes in on a wham block. Finally gets his guy going back a little. He didn't get his feet moving quickly enough, though. You got to hit, boom, and then get those feet going. Tom Zack is now the quarterback. Pickering in motion. Tom Zack gets to Anderson. Anderson around the corner tripped up by Lewis Phillips. He's got some speed. And we'll get back there and watch some more of that pit stuff in there. There's Rubens now. That time he did pretty good. You see, he got a position block that time. They just worked this guy, hooked him, had him hooked, kept working down the line of scrimmage. Pretty good. You know that guy that he was blocking is Jim Scow. And last year, he's a rookie. Last year coming out, he was he was the strongest guy coming out of college, you know, in those tests they do. There's a penalty on that last play. So they bring Anderson's game back. The Bears will start from their 20, still second down. Six fifty-one left in the game. Bears have it at their own 30. Pickering wide right. for Tim Reitman coming across the middle and Tom Zach missed him. You know, talking about Pickering, uh, you know, he was with the Cincinnati Bengals. They waved him. Mike Gick, uh, picked him up and he liked him in training camp. Then they waved him. Then he brought him back. But, you know, he was a basketball player. And he was a basketball, a great basketball player in high school. Went to the University of Maine. Only played football one year. But he was, in high school, he was so good in basketball that after his freshman year, they surveyed his house to see what school district he was in. Because he had a half and halfer going, right? And then the biggest part of it, that's the school he had to go to. Forward oh, handoff to Anderson, who can't shake away. Scow again. Well, you know, that has to be a good player. When they come and survey your house, you know, to, to decide where you go to high school, you have to be a good player. But see, he's a tall, he, he looks like a basketball player. He's yeah. a tall old drink of water. 
way, part oh, of his house was Number on one side, and that's where he went to school. Penalty is declined. Which side was his room on? Walk down. Well, they didn't get into that. They didn't get into which side. That's that's what they should have done. I mean, if he was really good, they would have gotten into you know where he spends most of his time. Well, he didn't spend it in the same place that William Perry did. <laughs> well, he did, but he was in line behind William Perry. <laughs> he got in the same line. He got in the chow line with Perry. We got there. There was no pieces left, just some bread and water. McGee, back deep. Buford to punt for the Bears. Mike Ditka. <laughs> 42-yard punt. And the score here in Cincinnati at Riverfront is the Bears 44, the Bengals 7. Six twenty-three left to play. Doug Gainer is now the Bengal quarterback. For eleven, puts down, gets up, and takes off. Ron Rivera, number fifty-one, and Morrissey. Rivera is fifty-nine. Beg your pardon. Do you remember what Sam White told us yesterday? Yesterday about Doug Gainer. Yep. He said, you know, someday he's going to be a player. He's only a rookie. He said, you won't see him tomorrow. And he said, at least I hope you won't see him tomorrow. But he did say he has high hopes for it. He didn't want to use those hopes today. Second and six. Draw play, Stanford Jennings. Short of the first down. Stopped by Morrissey again. This may be the type of game the Bears needed. You know, people were saying that, that maybe they need to get beat, you know, to get back into reality. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a negative thing to put you in reality. Something, a positive thing. It can be like this. Hey, we're pretty, that's what Fridge is telling Suey there. So he got his arm around him and said, I told you we're good. <laughs> we're like we were last year. Suey looks a little different this year. Notice that hair? Yeah. yeah. He died. over the left side. Flags down on the play. Rivera on the stop. No, Matt Suey started to go gray, and they started to call him the old man. You know, he started to get a little silver thatched. So he had a bet, and he bet that he would, that the, the bet was with the tight end, Dunsmore, that they cut. He had long hair, and Suey said, if you Off get line. a butch haircut, I'll dye my hair. Down. So Suey dyed his hair. See, now there's no white in there. There's no flex in there. But I'll tell you, with this humidity, man, that dye can go right out of you. Drip down into the towel. You see the towel? See those brown spots in That's yeah. from the dye. You, th you think it's too late for me? It just... <laughs> <laughs> You'd have a longer way to go than he had. <laughs> I think that's what the French was telling him. He was consoling him about that dye job he had. Still in there chasing. Stanford Jennings, the reception. Fensick knocked him out of bounds. Cleveland beat Detroit. That's the final, 24-21. Giants came back to beat New Orleans, 20-17. That's the final. Philadelphia over the Rams, 34-20. Fourth quarter. Pittsburgh has gone ahead of Houston, 16-13. San Diego six and the Los Angeles Raiders nothing in the first. Everyone asked me, what's wrong with those Raiders? I, I don't know. I mean, I think that, well, they don't have any wide receivers. They're getting open. That's one thing. Here is Brooks, and there's a flag on the play. Dave Durison came up to stop Brooks. Now helps him up. Penalty against Cincinnati. Cincinnati is one of these teams that you know somewhere has to get over the hump. 65 offense, first down. I think 
Sam Weishman, I think the whole team felt that they were ready for this game. They needed this game to beat a champion team to prove that they can be a champion and to prove that they can be a playoff contender and those types of things. I think that this loss has to set them back. When you, I mean, they had, yesterday when we were there, they were very confident. Yep. And I had the feeling that they had real high hopes about their performance today. And uh, when you have high hopes and you think you're going to win and you look like this at the end of the day, you take a lot out of you. Tim McGee made the catch from Gaynor, and Rivera made the stop. Look at that bare sideline, Pat. They're all too, too tired to argue. There's just a couple of them up there. All the other guys are just sitting on the bench, but usually when a quarterback comes over and is that close, they all start arguing. Look at those guys. They got all their stuff in the background. They're, they don't have any energy left to even argue with the official. And I thought, like Mike Ditka there, how he's sweating in that shirt. I thought if you buy expensive clothes, you don't sweat in them. Well, he did loosen the collar, loosen the tie, too. Yeah, but I mean, look, that, that shirt's soaking wet. Yeah, I know. When you spend that much for a shirt, it ought to be sweat proof. from Gaynor. A gain of five. Bestie Jackson up on the stop again. Philadelphia's first victory of the year. The Rams' first loss. That'll drop them into a tie at least with San Francisco depending upon what happens to Atlanta. One thing about that shirt though it doesn't wrinkle when you sweat in it. McMahon will do anything for his receivers. You see that? He puts his hand through the hair. He wipes them off with a towel. That's his tight end, Tim Wright. Nothing doing. Mike Hartenstein hammers Gainer to the ground. That's the Bears' fourth sack of the day. I'll tell you, Mike Hartenstein is playing as, as much as he's played in a long time. You know, he's been there for the Bears. He's a 12-year veteran, been a starter, of course, for most of those years. Didn't play much the last year or two, but they're going to play him a lot, and it's a one game when it's hot and humid. He and Peyton were drafted the same year, one and two. You know, they always say perfect weather. You always wonder for who? For big guys, you don't like warm weather. Hayes gets off a good punt. Does it go out of bounds at about the four-yard line? Good kick. That ball didn't hit the official down there, did it? I looked like it bounced off his foot. I know it. He was standing right there on that end line, on the goal line, on the pylon, and it looked like here that the ball hit him. Not a whole lot of people left in the stands. 44-7. to seven. I think the Bengals are too tired to argue about it. Let's see if we can see it. The ball's coming here. The official's going to be right on the goal line in the corner there. It, it did hit him, but it, it hit him out of bounds, right. though. When the score is 44-7, they say, who cares? <laughs> right. Just want to get it over with. Anderson. seven-yard line by Bussey. What a good run, nevertheless. I'll tell you, that was a heck of a run. He got hit, bounced to the outside, made a big play out of it. 155 left to play. And they'll get the two-minute warning. There's 44 to 7 over Cincinnati with a minute 55 left to play. Cincinnati's turnovers today, five, 13 penalties, and four sacks allowed. Too many miscues when you're playing a world up, especially when you're playing anyone. I mean, you can be, if you have that many miscues, uh, there's no way you can win a game. Right. Hand off is to Thomas. He tries to get to the outside and can't. 
No game. Yeah, sometimes we look, look up here, Pat, we forget how warm it still is down there. I mean, it's late in the day. They've been going all day. And it's 92 degrees down there in the mm -hmm. field now. So That's still hot. Yeah, they started out at 110 down to 92. But that's the days where, you know, so, some of these big linemen will lose as much as 30 pounds in a game like this. Disappointed spectator. Ken Valisari of the Bears with McMahon. Anderson around the left side. Hooked down by Kiki Diala. Three yard gain. Gary Fensick. Here's a guy that, you know, we talk about guys that have been playing for a long time. You know, Fensick is in the game 11 years from Yale. You keep thinking he's just going to play a few years and go into business or something. Here it is, 11 years. Think he'll slow down. He doesn't slow down. But he looks so innocent, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, I mean, he looks like that guy is a choir boy. I mean, he couldn't hit anyone. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, that's how he looks. But that's not how he plays. And he plays like yeah. another guy. Right. He plays like dirt. Hand off Anderson. Anderson. Left side running hard. Walter Payton. Had a rather easy afternoon. And that's going to be it. Boomer Esiason did not have an easy afternoon. Seven. That's the final. The Bears remain unbeaten, and Cincinnati goes to two and two. And they have uh, 